Hello, this is Professor BRB, and in response to a subscriber request, uh, today I'll be showing you how to draw this umbrella in Adobe Illustrator. Now, I'm working in Illustrator Creative Cloud, but this will work probably back to maybe any version back to CS5. So start with a new, a new uh, rather, Illustrator document, and show your rulers, show your grid, and turn on Snap to Grid. First we're going to go to our Ellipse tool, which lives under the Rectangle tool, and start at a grid intersection and hold down your Shift key to constrain uh, your circle, your ellipse to a perfect circle. And you want to draw a circle exactly five inches wide and the snap to grid will really help you out here. So you have a circle here now. The first thing we're going to do is draw this dome. So we need to get rid of the bottom half of the circle. Let's get rid of that fill right over here. Direct selection tool, click off to deselect and then just with direct selection just select that one point and hit the delete key on your keyboard. Now object half Join. And there we have our dome. So now we just need to make these cutouts. And that's not very difficult to do. Let me zoom in here a little bit. Stick with my ellipse tool here and uh, maybe starting uh, three little grid squares up right over here at this intersection. I'm just going to draw. a nice ellipse six squares deep. And the snap to grid should really help me out here. You can see if I go to outline view that it's, it's exact and that's thanks to snap to grid. Uh, next, I want to select just this, this smaller ellipse and I want to drag it over uh, exactly an inch. So if I hold down my shift and option keys, push down my mouse button and drag, It'll snap it right to the grid there. Now, make sure that you release your mouse button before you release uh, the keyboard keys, and you'll get a copy. So the Option key made it a copy, and the Shift key uh, kept it constrained to straight. We can just repeat that transformation by going to Object, Transform, Transform again, and you can see there's a keyboard command here, Command-D. So let's do that for the next two. Command D, Command D. That was easy. Select everything. That's important. And now we're going to use the marvelous Shape Builder tool, which I love. Now the way the Shape Builder tool works is if you have selected shapes, if you drag across them, it will add them together. But that's not what I want, so I'm going to undo that. If you hold down the Option key, and you can see I got a little minus there where my cursor is. Now I can hold down my mouse button and drag and deletes. Now you could also do this with the Pathfinder, but I think it's actually easier to use the Shape Builder. So now we have our dome, and what we need to do is create the, um, the shapes that allow us to break it up into different colors. So let's see how we can accomplish that. Uh, when we go to our uh, Layers panel, we can see we just have one shape right here, just one path. It's a closed path of our dome. And I'm going to duplicate that layer and name the first layer Dome. Very good. Now going back to my Selection tool, I'm going to select that first layer in my Layer panel. And notice that selects it. I'm going to paint it red and then turn it off and turn the whole layer off. So now I have my second copy here and uh, I can work with this without losing my original dome. So let's draw a line here. I'm going to go back to my layer and let's make sure you're back in your layer, your new layer, and draw just drag over from the ruler 
a line showing the exact center of your shape. Now, next thing we're going to do is use the arc tool, which is over here and it lives under the line segment tool, uh, to draw some arcs that we'll be using to divide up our umbrella. And you really have to use your grid here because you want this to be exact. So when I go down here to the bottom, you can see I'm positioning my cursor exactly over the grid intersection and holding down my mouse key and dragging up. And you can see here that the, um, the arc is going in the wrong direction. So I just have to hit the F key and that pulls it to the right direction. So now I have one here. Let me um, give this a black stroke so that we can see what we've just done. So there's there. Actually, here, let me give it a red stroke. because That'll make it even a little more obvious what we've done. Uh, so that's good. We got our first one. Let's try again. Be very exact here. Go right down to that grid intersection. And then hold down your mouse button and pull it up. And make sure you're ending right at that center. And again, the snap to grid will really help you out here. I kind of think you see where this is going now. I don't think I got it quite right there. Let me redo that. If you have a doubt, just delete it and make sure you've got it exact. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now, right now, of course, these are not closed shapes. So my job is far from done. If I just select these and create a fill, it's just going to do that. That's not at all what I want. So I have some work to do in order to actually break these up into closed shapes. And my shape builder tool, once again, can be my best friend. So back to my selection tool. I'm going to select everything. Well, let's take a look at our example here. Uh, you notice I've got three with the yellow here. And uh, let me just open this one up and kind of show you what it is here. Um, if I turn that off, you can see that I've got my purple dome here. And then these shapes are coming in right on top of it. So what I need to do is delete these two shapes. Uh, right here. And let's go to our good old friend, the Shape Builder, which we just love. And I'm holding down the Option key and dragging this, and holding down the Option key and dragging this. Now, it looks here like our job is done, but it's we still have something else to do because of the way the Shape Builder works. Um, if you use the Shape Builder with two closed shapes, like I'm doing over here, and uh, I just delete here. It just completely deletes the shape that I wanted deleted. But if you do what we just did and use a non-closed shape, like just a line, the way the Shape Builder tool works is that it does what you want, but it also leaves that extra line there. So we don't quite know it yet, but we have some extra lines here that we've got to get rid of. And if I go into my Layers panel, I can kind of see it. Uh, I have my three paths here that I want. This path, this closed path, and this closed path. But there are also all these other shapes. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn the three ones that I want off for the moment in my layers panel, I'm just going to select these and get rid of them. And then I can turn these back on. Uh, so now uh, things are looking pretty good for me. I can uh, create uh, a color here. Um, wait, oh, I've got to select them first. <laughs> my bad. Uh, right there. That's good. And get rid of that line. Go back to layers and turn on turn on my under layer and once again I can get rid of the stroke 
And I made my point with this. Uh, so I don't need that anymore. Uh, let's, let's go back to my this here. And I kind of like these little balls here. I think those finish it off in a nice way. And it's a little bit extra trouble. I mean, you could call it you could call it quits right now and say, hey, I've drawn a pretty good uh, umbrella. But I think the little balls will make it even look cooler. So um, if you're happy with your umbrella right now, that's uh, that's fine. But I want to make it just a little bit more complete. So let's go back to uh, kind of look what we've got here and then go back to preview and get to our ellipse tool again, which you can see is really a good friend to us. And just I'm going to make a little circle, just one grid unit. Just a small little ball there. And I can kind of, I'm going to have to probably turn off. Uh, let's see if I can get this to work. A snap to grid. Yeah, see, snap to grid is snapping it there. It won't let me do what I want. So I'm just going to have to turn it back off. Okay, there. Goodbye, snap to grid for the moment. And now I can move this to the center. And I want to make sure it's absolutely in a perfect position. So if I go to um, outline view, I want it to be perfect. And I'll show you why in a moment. So that looks pretty good. I don't want to have uh, any kind of a stroke on this, and I can leave the fillet red. That's kind of that's fine. That that works with what I'm doing. So now, shift and option, and I've got to move this into exactly the right position. Let's see if I did that. Yeah, that looks pretty good. So object transform, transform again, the trick we used before, and then just command D, command D, command D. When we go back to preview view, that looks pretty good. Very nice. I think it looks better with the little balls on it. Only thing we need now is our handle. So uh, back where you found the ellipse tool, go to the rounded rectangle tool and draw yourself a rounded rectangle. Now you can control, let me just turn this off, you can control with the up and down arrows on your keyboard. If you just keep hitting the up arrow or the down arrow, you can control the radius of the rounded corners. So just do it until you like the way it looks. And let's get rid of the fill. Give it kind of a brown stroke. Not quite sure how thick I want it to be. Let's try. I don't know, maybe 10 points, maybe 11 points. Direct selection and click off to deselect and then just select those two points there, those upper right hand corner points and hit your delete key. If you like, you can go to your stroke panel over here and show your options and put a rounded stroke on it. And just move this into position. Of course, we don't want it to be sitting in front. Object arrange, center back, and get it perfectly centered. And congratulations, you've drawn an umbrella. And let's hide our grid so we can get the full benefit of what we've done here. And it looks pretty great, pretty great to me. So uh, thanks for uh, sticking with me, and uh, I hope you all enjoy this little exercise.